Hi friends, welcome back. In the last chapter on static timing analysis series, we studied about the setup time, hold time, what is setup window, hold window, and why do we have these terms setup and hold, and from where they come and what is their importance. So in this chapter, let's derive the setup and hold equation. So let's get started. So always remember that the timing paths and what is the relationship of each and every timing path with clock. So the timing paths are always relative or synchronous to a clock. Here we are talking, talking about the synchronous data timing paths. So if you have not gone through the timing path chapter, which we have already covered, please first go through that. I will provide the link in the description section so that you will understand the terms which I will be going to use related to the timing paths. So here to note that data arrives at a start point relative to a clock. So we in, in, in the timing path, we have the start point and add and end point. So at the start point, the data availability will be with respect to the clock and the data gets captures at the end point, which is also related to a clock. So the end point data availability is also with respect to a clock. And always remember that for each and every clock cycle, the register gets reset for the timing analysis. Starting a new cycle, the clock signal resets the time at a register. So it is a phase start at each and every clock cycle from the register start point. So ST tool breaks all the timing paths at registers as we have already discussed. So that each timing path has one clock cycle or one clock period as the timing goal. That means the, the timing path or the timing of a particular timing path should get closed in one clock, clock cycle. That is the goal. We will see in more details what is it exactly mean in the next slides. So here there is one important terminology which is slack. So just remember at this point that slack for the setup analysis is slack is nothing but required required time minus the arrival time and required time is nothing but defined by the timing constant like a clock period and arrival time is nothing but the time the data arrives at the end point of the timing path so for the setup analysis the slack calculations will be required time minus arrival time and for the hold analysis, the slack will be arrival time minus required time. So we will see in details what is the arrival time and what is the required time in both the cases, in the setup case as well as in the hold case in the next slides. And always remember that positive slack, slack indicates that path is meeting the timing and the negative slack indicates that paths do not meet the timing requirement. So to meet the timing requirement, our slack should always be positive. Okay, now let's see all these things in more details. So here first we are going to analyze the setup requirement for a register to register timing path. So here you can see that this is the launch flop. And here we have the capture flop. So the data is launched from the start point of the launch flop, which is clock fin and it will end at the data pin of the capture flip flop okay so data is launched so here we are saying that clock raise one clock raise one is nothing but the register one clock and clock raise two is the register two clock okay so the data is launched as the at the positive edge of this clock raise one of the launch flip flop so here the data will be launched and as we have already discussed in one of our previous chapter, the data will be captured at the next clock edge of the capture flow. So the data will be captured at this clock edge. So this check is nothing but called a setup check. And we have the clock period. This is our clock periods and data is captured at this clock edge and data is launched at this, this clock edge. Okay. Now, the requirement here is the setup requirement here is the delay, the clock to Q delay, the clock to Q delay of the launch flip flop plus this combinational delay. This delay 
should be less than clock period minus t theta. What does it mean is when the data is known that here at this clock age, the data will take some time which is clock to Q delay plus some combinational delay. Okay. So this total delay, for example, this is our total delay. So this delay should be less than this is the time period T. So here it completes one clock time minus T theta. So if this is our T theta, this time it's T theta. Okay. So T minus T theta. This complete is our this complete time is T, clock period is T. So T minus ka T setup. That is nothing but this. So this data which is launched from the launch flip flop should reach at 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 or before t minus ka t setup which is this part. So this is our setup requirement. Here if you see the clock to q delay plus combinational delay should be less than clock period minus t setup. Now this is remember always this is an important equation. So from here we can also determine that what would be the minimum clock period. So here clock period should be greater than clock to q delay plus combinational delay plus t theta. So this is very important interview questions that what is the maximum, what is the minimum time period or what is the maximum frequency in order to meet the setup requirement. So here our t should be greater than clock to q delay plus combinational delay plus t theta. So now let's see what is the required and arrival time as we read in the previous slide. So the required time, okay, the required time is this one. So what the setup requirement, so setup, setup requirement here is saying is the data should reach before clock period minus ka t setup. So this is our requirement. So the data should reach before this point. This point is nothing but t minus ka t setup. Okay, so the required time is clock period minus ka t setup of register 2. Remember the t setup of register 2. This is our required time. And what is the actual arrival time? The arrival time is nothing but the actual time the data will take to propagate from the time the rising edge happens and when it finally reaches at the D in data input pin of the flip flop. So the arrival time here is clock to q delay, clock to q delay of the register 1 plus this combination delay. So this is our arrival time. Now the slack is, this is nothing but called slack. This is our slack. Okay. The arrival time, the data has arrived at this point and the actual time before that the data should arrive, which is nothing but required time, it's this one, this point. So this point, this, this, this value is nothing but slack. So slack is nothing but our required time, which is nothing but t minus uh, t setup minus arrival time, which is t clock to q delay plus combination delay. So hope this setup requirement for register to register path is clear. Now let's see the hold requirement for register to register path. Okay. So as we already know that when the data is launched at this clock age, so this is the clock register 1. So data is launched at the rising age of clock register 1. And this data will be captured at the register 2 rising edge clock. So this is the rising edge clock for register 2. So as we have already discussed, the hold check is done at the same clock age. So the data is launched at the this age of clock register 1. And the, 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 the register 2 has the clock range 2 clock as a clock port. So at the same, at, at the corresponding rising edge of the clock register 2. At this point, the rising edge of the clock register 2, we will have to do the hold check. So the hold check is done at the same clock age at which the data is launched. Okay. So now, so the definition of the hold time says that the data should be stable for t hold time after the clock age. Okay. So for example, this is this is our t hold time. Okay. 
so this is our t hold time this one so for this much time for this much time the data at d pin should be stable that means whatever the data launched at this clock edge should not reach at this d pin before the t hold time of this flip flop this is the meaning of hold requirement okay now the data which is launched at this clock edge how much time it will take to travel from this d pin to the next d pin it will take the clock to q delay plus this combination logic delay so this is the time this data will take so this time this time should be greater than t hold time of this flip flop so t the clock to q delay plus combinational delay should be greater than hold check so hold check the meaning of this is nothing but the at the instance or at the point where you are doing the hold check so by default the hold check is done at the same clock edge okay so in that particular case the hold check zero value is zero because we are doing at the same clock edge there is no difference between this rising edge there is no timing difference between this rising edge and the clock register to rising edge so in here we are not basically including any clock skew and all we are doing the hold check at zero instance that means we are saying that there is no time difference between the two register clock basically um, there is no time difference between these two register clock point the clock rising edge is happening at the same time okay so the hold check at zero so the, the value the time time value for the hold check at zero is by default it is zero without including any skew and all and this is the t hold time so the clock to q delay plus combination delay in this particular case actually should be greater than t hold of the register to this is the hold requirement for register to register part okay now let's see what is the required time in this case so the required time is nothing but what we have to make sure for the hold requirement that the data which is launched from the launch flop should not reach at the d input of this capture flip flop before the t hold time before the t hold time of this flip flop so here we are assuming that there is no clock skew no no clock skew no clock uncertainty kind of things so in that particular case we only have the t hold time so this is our required time required timing hold check zero so by default we are taking it zero without any clock skew and all and the t hold time so the required time is nothing but this t hold time and what is the actual time the actual time or arrival time is nothing but clock to q delay plus this combinational logic gate delay now here just analyze here that the concept here is the delay the clock to q delay plus this combinational logic delay should be greater than this t hold time in order to meet the hold requirement so here our hold slack will be arrival time minus required time it is opposite of the setup slack here always remember that our arrival time should be more than the required time so to make the slack positive we have to subtract from subtract required time from the arrival time okay so and remember default hold check is at zero the zero is near meaning meaning is zero instance of this law so this is nothing but zero instance the default hold check is at zero so hope this hold requirement of register to register path is also clear so always remember this is an important equations hold equation so if you if you see the setup equations and the hold equation by closely looking at it you will see that there is no time period or clock period requirement in the hold equation in the setup equation we see that clock period is there in the hold in the setup equations but here there is no time period anywhere mentioned in this hold equations where we have the clock to q delay plus combinational delay then hold check at zero and the t hold so there is no clock period here in the hold equations so 
that means the whole equations or the whole check do not depend on the flow field okay so the performance of a circuit or a logic design is basically depends on the setup equation or the setup requirement performance means at what frequency our designs will be working so to determine that we have to determine that basically through the setup requirement equation so if you see here our time period time period should be greater than clock to q delay plus combinational delay plus t setup so the minimum time will be this and minimum time will be this one and uh, the maximum clock frequency will be 1 by so we will cover the maximum clock frequency of a circuit in one of the next chapter. So now let's see the setup requirement for the input to register path. So in the previous two slides, we went through the setup and hold requirement of a register to register path. Now let's see the setup requirement for a input to register path. So this is nothing but a but one input to register path. Now let's see and modify this. So if you see this is our nothing but our input to register path and let's assume that this is the design we have and uh, so this is called a constraint design so here we have this our this design which we are going to constrain so if we just extend a little bit this design suppose this is our one ip okay this is a one ip and in a whole system at a, at a soc level we have a number of ips correct and those ips are basically interacting to each other so just assume that this is ip1 and this is ip2 so but in this particular case we are constraining or we are doing st analysis of ip1 so if we assume that if we assume that this ip is basically interacting with one another ip ip2 so we will have this kind of structure where this input this input data at this pin is coming from some of the register through the combinational logic correct so actually speaking all paths all paths are treated as register to register path only in sta environment so here this input to output path we are basically assuming it as a register to register path by assuming one outside word where we are saying that this input at our ip level is coming from some another register and here this is the input delay so now at this point okay at this point so basically our primary goal is to calculate the delay this delay right with respect to the clock so this is clock so here it will be clock to q delay plus this combinational logic delay will be the total delay at this point so this we will call as input delay so if we can define an input delay at this pin with respect to this clock then we are okay we have the clock to q delay plus this combinational logic one delay we are defining a value for that this complete delay as an input delay okay so we will cover in some of our next uh, chapters where we will study about the uh, sdc constraints where we have a sdc constraints named as input delay where for all the input ports of our designs we will define an input delay which will be used by the sta tool to do the timing checks so if we see this or basically if we model our input path input to register path like this by assuming one outside word then this becomes nothing but a register to register path and for the register to register path we have already seen in the previous slides what is the setup requirement and what is the holder requirement so hope this is also clear 
So if you see here the setup, you can move for input to register path. So here we have assumed one outside word. So the required time will be required time will be nothing but the data which is launched from this flip flow, and when it reaches at this point, this is nothing but the actual arrival time of the data, and the required time is this data should reach before this clock period e and the setup time of this flip flow. So the required time is clock period minus e setup. And the arrival time will be clock to queue delay of register 1 plus combination logic delay 1 plus combination logic delay 2. Correct. And the clock to queue delay plus combination logic 1 delay, if we consider it as a, uh, if we, we define this as input delay, then this will become our input delay. So the arrival time will be input delay plus combination logic delay, and the slack will be required time minus arrival time. So if we have the input delay defined for our IP constraint, then the STA tool will take this input delay for the arrival time calculation. Now let's see the hold requirement. So similar to the hold requirement of a register to register path, the same concept will be here. The required time will be hold check at zero plus T hold time, and the arrival time will be again that total propagation time. This delay plus combination of the one delay plus combination of the two delay. This we can combine as input delay. So this will become our hold requirement. Now let's see the setup requirement for register to output path. So register to output. This is our register to output path. This is our IP. So again, let's assume that we have an another our IP, which is interacting with our own IP. And the data which is going from our IP to the another IP, the another in another IP space through the combination logic, one capture register, register which is register two will capture that particular data. So if we assume a outside word like this, then this is again a register to register path. So as I said earlier, from a STA perspective, STA tool perspective, or as how STA do the timing calculations it treats each and every path as register to register path so here also if you see that this is the output path and this is the this is the output pin and this is the combinational logic too so if you we consider this or if this delay is given to us the combination logic to delay is given to us then we are okay we only need the output delay or the delay this delay corresponding to the corresponding to any combinational logic in the outside world. So from the outside world, if we are given the output delay, then we are okay to do the setup and hold requirement analysis. So if you see here the required time again, what will be the required time? The clock plus the clock period minus the T setup of this flip flop. And arrival time will be this delay plus this delay plus this delay logic 2 delay if the logic 2 delay is nothing but our output delay so in the st constraints we will define or we have to define the output delay for all the output ports so one thing to remember here is the input delay or the output delay they are always with respect to the clock pin so with respect to this clock what is this delay they are always with respect to the clock so here again our setup select will be required time minus the time. So similarly the hold requirement, the required time is hold check at zero instant by default plus T hold time and the arrival time will be clock to Q delay plus combination logic plus logic one delay plus logic two delay. And the, here the arrival times the, the, the combination logic two delay we can model at a out, as output delay and this will be our setup or setup select. This will be our hold select. Now let's see the input to output path timing requirement. So in the input to output path, there are no flip flops in between. We only have the combinational logic, correct? So to do the timing analysis for this, we have to assume a virtual clock or a dummy clock, okay? So the SK tool or we have to provide a virtual clock or a dummy clock to the SDA tool to do the timing requirement check for the input to output path, which is purely combinational logic path. So in that particular case, 
we have we have a virtual clock or a dummy clock dummy clock time period defined then with this t clock or with this clock with the time period t we will have to define the input delay we will have to define the output delay of this path and anyway we have the combinational logic delay corresponding to the combo logic in our path and then the slack will be clock period minus input delay output delay and combinational minus combinational logic delay this will be our slack so the idea here is the path should close in one clock cycle the path delay or the timing path of a particular path should get closed in one clock cycle so the total delay here input delay output delay and the combinational logic delay this should be less than our clock period and the input delay and output delay are, delay are always set with respect to the clock so hope this is clear